Good morning everyone and welcome along to another day of GSC at home. Now my name is Aileen and I am very excited because in just a second I am going to introduce you to someone very special. So this is my pet corn snake and her name is Amber. Now you might see Amber sticking her tongue out at you a little bit today. Uh, I promise, oh thank you, I kiss. Uh, I promise she is not being cheeky. Um, that is how snakes actually sense what's round about them. They'll flick their tongues in and out and they are smelling and tasting the air around them and that tells them if there's food or anything tasty around. So she is just sensing where she is right now. Um, corn snakes are one of the most popular species of snake to have as a pet and that's because generally they're very friendly and they're very calm and they have a very docile nature as well. So when Amber was born, she would only have been around a few centimetres long, but corn snakes can grow to be between 120 centimetres and about 180 centimetres long. So although they can get quite long in the body, oh, lovely cuddle as well, thank you. Um, although they can get quite long in their bodies, they have very slim bodies. Okay, and that's the way that she will stay. Now, corn snakes are naturally found in the southern states of North America. Um, the reason that they got their name of corn snake is because they are generally found around cornfields and around farmlands, things like that. Which is a good thing because what they do is they help to keep the mouse population down, which is great for farmers. Um, but her belly, if we can take a little look at her belly right now, there we go. Um, corn snakes sometimes have a black and white checkerboard pattern on their tummies. Um, Amber doesn't quite have that colouring, but you can see she has the pattern, just a much lighter, lighter shade. Uh, so it usually looks a little bit like um, a checkerboard or piano keys is sometimes the way it is described. Um, it also resembles the pattern on a corn on the cob, which is what was growing in the field, and that is how they got the name of corn snake. Now, I got Amber when she was two years old. She has lived with me for three years this month, so she is getting quite big. Um, now, corn snakes do the majority of their growing between the ages of two and four years old. So although she will continue to grow through her life, it won't be as much. Um, so she's five years old now, but she could live to be as old as 20 years, which is quite a long lifespan for a pet. So a question that I'm asked quite often is, could she bite you? And the very simple answer to that is yes, she could, but so could I. I could bite somebody if I wanted to, and so could you. Um, but as I said, corn snakes generally have a very gentle nature, as you can see, uh, she's a very cuddly lady. Um, and they'd be most likely to bite somebody if they were hurting them or behaving in a way that was threatening towards them. So she might give a bite just as a warning to stay away and to leave her alone. But Amber is a constrictor, and what that means is she has no venom. Now you might hear people sometimes talk about poisonous snakes, but snakes are not actually poisonous. Um, poison will usually be absorbed through your skin if you were to touch it. You might eat or drink it or breathe it in, but venom is a little bit different. So snakes that have venom would inject it through their fangs into to their prey. As we said, Amber is non-venomous. She is a constrictor. So she would bite just to grip onto her prey, wrap her body very tightly around and squeeze all that air out. And then what she does is she unhinges her jaw and she's gonna open her whole mouth up really, really wide like this so that she can swallow her prey all in one. Now, she actually um, has about 20 to 30 teeth. Inside a corn snake's mouth is quite jaggy. It's a little bit serrated, but their teeth are very, very short. It's really just to grip onto their prey. So if you were to get a bite from a corn snake, it feels a bit like a, a few paper cuts or a couple of cat scratches, but that is really as bad as it gets, okay? Now, about a week ago, I noticed that Amber was starting to change colour. She's normally this beautiful sort of orange peachy colour that you can see right now, but um, about a week ago she started to turn pink and she looked a little bit like a sausage, okay. But what that tells me is that she is milking up. 
um, she is getting ready to shed her skin and that's what they do beforehand. So they'll change colour and in her case, like I say, she turns pink for a few days and as that skin is ready to come off, she'll turn back to her normal colour and about 24 to 48 hours later, she is ready to get rid of that skin. The outer layer of skin uh, becomes too small and they have to take it off. Now, human beings shed their skin too, but it's something that we do all the time. We actually lose about 1 million skin cells every 24 hours, but they're very small and we don't really notice this process happening. But a snake's skin is a lot less stretchy and flexible than human skin. So once every so often, they need to get rid of that outer layer. So what I'll watch for is Amber starting to become very active in her tank. She'll start to rub her nose against every surface that she can. And what she's trying to do is loosen up that skin on her face. It's a little bit like taking your hood down on your jacket. So that's what she's looking to do initially. And then she'll move and wriggle around her tank as much as she can and she'll keep going until her skin comes completely off of her body. Now, a good sign of a healthy snake is a good shed. And that will mean it will come off in maybe one or two pieces. Um, it is quite fragile, so it can break as she moves, but that's a good sign if it comes off in a, a couple of pieces. If a snake is having quite a hard time and it's taking a long time and it's coming off in really tiny pieces, that can be a sign that they're not very well. They might need some help, like a nice warm bath, or they might need a trip to the vet. Now, because Amber shed her skin a week ago, I have a lovely piece of her skin that we can take a closer look at in just a second. But I think what we will do is we will say goodbye to this beautiful lady for now, eh, and we will take a closer look at her skin. I have a piece of Amber's skin right here. Now, once it comes off, it dries out pretty quickly and it be can become quite fragile. So you can hear the noise that it makes. It sounds a little bit crunchy, doesn't it? But looking at this skin, we can see the different shapes of her scales. So on her back, her scales are diamond shape. Um, but if we turn it over, so this would be her belly, you can see that the shape of her scales are entirely different. So they're quite long this time and it's more of a rectangular kind of shape. And this is because it's much easier for her to move around. Obviously she moves on her belly um, and having her scales this shape means it's less likely that things will get stuck uh, underneath her and hurt her. So this is pretty important. Now I have another piece that's very small, but it's the piece that came from her face. So what we can see there, this would be her nose, just here. And if you look very closely, you can see where her eyes would be. You can also see that there's skin that covers her eyes. So snakes don't actually have eyelids, which means they sleep with their eyes open. They have skin that completely covers both eyes and this protects them, stops anything from getting in there. And when they shed their skin, it's really important that these pieces come off. They're called eye caps or brows. And if they don't come off and they stick to the snake's eye, um, eventually it can cause long-term damage to their eyes. So it's very important to make sure that those parts come off. Now, I do hope you have enjoyed meeting Amber this morning, but it's time to pass you over to meet Sam and Archie. So oh, thank you, Aileen and Amber. It's now time to meet a different type of snake, which is similar to the corn snake, but also has some interesting differences too. This is Archimedes, or Archie for short. Archie is a royal or ball python, a relatively small, non-venomous snake who is extremely docile and relaxed, making him a fantastic pet. Now, I got Archie when he was around one year old, uh, so that makes him about four now. And with good care, he can also live for up to 20 years in my house, so he's going to be around for quite a while yet. Now, Archie is about over three feet in length, but has plenty of growing still to do and you might even reach up to 5 feet, or 150 centimetres. Snakes never stop growing, so he'll just keep getting bigger and bigger as long as I keep giving him bigger food. In the wild, royal pythons are found in sub-Saharan Africa and live in grasslands or savannas. 
They are a type of python, which gives them some very interesting and unique characteristics. Alongside boas, python species have the ability to detect infrared thermal radiation, or to put it another way, they're able to see heat. Alongside Archie's face, you can see small holes or pits. This is a type of organ, and it allows Archie to see the world in a completely different way from humans, and corn snakes too for that matter who can't do this. Our royal pythons are sit and wait predators, which means that they sit and they wait for a meal to pop by. And using their pit organs, they can tell when something warm-blooded like a mouse or a rat walks by and grab hold of it to eat. Now just like Amber the corn snake, Archie and other pythons are constricting species and he has extremely strong muscles to allow him to do this. Now, another interesting feature of these snakes are the beautiful patterns on their skin. Uh, in the wild, they have this pattern to stay hidden from both prey and predators, hiding amongst leaves and scrub on the ground. Now, Archie has a typical wild pattern, but some of these snakes come in really weird and wonderful colours. And it's said that this beauty is what gave rise to their name as royal pythons, because uh, Cleopatra, the queen of Egypt, uh, was said to wear these snakes as bracelets, so they would sit on her wrist nice and relaxed. And that's where they got their name as royal pythons. There's just one last thing that I would like to show you before I pop Archie back into his tank. At the base of his tail, he has two small spikes or spurs, which are the remnants of snakes' legs. How cool is that? These are what we would call vestigial legs, something that evolution has started to take away, but hasn't quite finished it yet. Humans have vestigial body parts too, such as our appendix. We have it, but we don't need it. Now the male pythons actually do use these. They hold on to female pythons during mating, so whilst they're not legs anymore, they do actually still have an important use. And last but not least, as a cold-blooded animal, snakes keep themselves warm by using heat from their surroundings, like my body heat from my hands, or a heat lamp, or the sun. And I think he's been out of his tank for long enough. I don't want him to get too cold. So I think that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much from both me and from Archie for joining us for another day at GSC at home. If you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments below, or why not even share pictures of the pets that you have at home. For now, Take care and we'll see you all next time.